What's up guys, I'm Brandon J from WA Production and today we're going to debunk these four crazy myths about FL Studio that's holding a lot of people back from making great music. So let's jump right to it. Myth number one, it is only for beginners. Now there's a difference between a beginner friendly DAW and an only for beginners DAW. FL Studio used to be named Fruity Loops back in the day which kind of sounds similar to this popular breakfast cereal for kids. And up until this day, Fruity Loops is still its household moniker which kind of creates a bad notion that FL Studio is only for amateurs. FL Studio has improved a lot over the years and now it has become a professional music production platform that allows people to make great music in a discreet and unconventional way. It has all the synthetic instruments and effects plugins that you need. From Dynamics Processing plugins for consistency and control, reverb and delay for space, filters for masking, pitch correction for refining, and the rest of its sound design tools. The only thing that you're going to need to invest in are your recording and playback devices, and most importantly, your skills. You have to spend at least an hour or two hours a day learning music production. Learn how your DAW works. Learn how sound design works. Learn how music theory works. Learn how to create your own presets, your own samples, and whatnot. And better yet, learn to play an instrument and get better at it. Because nothing really beats a real instrumentalist. Trust me. Myth number two is that it is only for EDM and hip hop. Now don't get me wrong, FL Studio is one of those digital audio workstations that is very suitable for hip hop and EDM, but that doesn't make FL only exclusive for those two genres. Because in FL Studio, just like any other digital audio workstations, you can make ballads, rock, country, funk, and all other genres that you have in mind. One good example for this is Pro Tools. Pro Tools is kind of known for audio editing, recording, mixing, and mastering. But Sigala made the pop EDM hit song Came Here For Love using it, which breaks the notion that you can't make EDM in Pro Tools. Same goes with FL Studio. There are a lot of great tracks that was made using FL Studio that aren't EDM, such as the movie trailer score of Hell on the Border, video game score of Lawbreakers, and Wolfstein The New Order. Myth number three is that it lacks in audio editing features. When I first heard of this, I was like, are you kidding me? FL Studio probably has more audio editing and restoration features compared to any other digital audio workstations in the market right now. But the thing is, only a few of those are found on the playlist. Most of its audio editing gems are found elsewhere. See, in FL Studio, we have this audio editor in which you can do whatever it is that you want to a certain sample. You can create fades, blur and generate sounds from a sample, and it even has its own denoiser in which you can let it analyze the noise profile and extract that specific noise from the audio. Also, a lot of people think that the only way to warp samples in FL is through the playlist. That's probably the reason why ImageSign removed the time warping in Newtone and instead created a new plugin, Newtime, for that specific purpose. And it's only available in version 20.6 and above. Myth number four is that its audio engine sucks. There's a lot of threads online claiming that their digital audio workstation sounds better than FL Studio. They say, oh, Ableton sounds better, Logic sounds better, Studio One sounds better, Cubase sounds better, or God knows what software sounds better. And so today we're going to do a blind test. And for that, I'm going to need my computer. What I have here are stems of a song which I produced a few months ago. And we're going to sum them all up using the same exact settings in three different softwares. Let's see if you can hear the difference. Did you hear it? Let's do one more. Did you hear the 
difference? If so, congratulations. There must be really something special with your ears because they are all the same. Don't believe me? Let me prove to you why. But first, let me show you what an audio looks like if you zoom it in all the way. This should remind you of your analytic geometry days when you have to deal with a lot of graphs and coordinates. But I promise you, this one is a piece of cake. This right here is what we call an amplitude, which is the maximum distance of the crest from the equilibrium. And the distance between each crest is what we call the wavelength. In theory, if we play two identical waves together, the amplitude will be doubled, which makes it twice as loud as the source. Therefore, if we flip the polarity of the other one, it'll sum up to zero, which results to a complete silence. Now let's do the test. I will flip the polarity of the exported file from FL since it's the main subject in question, so that if I play it along with the exported file from Ableton or Studio One, we will hear the difference. Now let's listen to FL's output when soloed. If I play it along with Ableton's, now let's try Studio One. As you can see, the mixer is telling us that we have two active signals that are playing, but the master is telling us a different story, which proves my point. They are all the same. And that wraps up for today, guys. If you happen to be more curious about FL Studio, you can check out our previous video on why I think FL Studio is the best DAW. And if you happen to be a complete beginner, you can check out our full in-depth introductory course where we explain systematically all there is to know to start making your first beat in FL Studio. The link is in the description down below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, Please do and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll get notified the next time we upload a new video. Again, this is Brandon J from WA Production signing off.